Well, good morning, Cornerstone family. It's great to have you join us online today. We're going to do some worship. We're going to study God's Word together. Let's join Pastor Joy and Kim. Good morning, church family. Thank you for joining us today. We want more love, more power in our lives. Come on, let's worship the Lord together. With your voices. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More love, more power, more of you in my life. And I will worship you with all of my heart. And I will worship you. With all of my mind, and I will worship you with all of my strength. You are my Lord. You are my God. We see more faith, more passion. Come on, more faith. More passion, more of you in my life. Come on, more faith, more faith, more passion, more of you in my life. Cause I will worship you with all of my heart. Cause I will worship you with all of my mind. Cause I will worship you. With all of my strength, you are my Lord. You are my God. More love, more power. Sing. More love, more power, more of you in my life. Make that your prayer, sing it. More love, more power, more of you in my life. Cause I will worship you with all of my heart. Cause I will worship you with all of my mind. Cause I will worship you with all of my strength. You are my my God. I will worship you with all of my heart. I will worship you with all of my mind. I will worship you with all of my strength. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. You are. You are my God. Cause I will worship you with all of my heart. And I will worship you. With all of my mind, and I will worship you with all of my strength. You are my Lord. You are my God. Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place, I worship you. 
worship you. I worship you. You are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. That is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. 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 You're working in this place. We don't see it. We don't feel it. We know you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, yeah. When maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are when maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Yeah. Working in this place. Come on. Even when I don't see it, I don't feel it. Come on. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, yeah. When making miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are when maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. 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 God, that you are with us, you are for us, you're working in this place, in our homes, our relationships. That's who you are. You are our God. Working miracles. We pray for miracles around us, God. 
So you need to heal our hearts, heal our homes, our relationships, God. Father, we worship your name, the precious name of Jesus, the name that heals, that saves, God, that we can run to you, that you are a strong and mighty tower. You are our refuge, our strength. You are our love. So, Father, continue to minister to us, God. Continue to encourage us, build us up. Be with our families at home. Be with our relationships. Restore us, renew us, and heal us, God. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Prepare our hearts for your message. Bless our pastor, raise his peace. We worship you in Jesus' name. All God's people say, amen.
Well, good morning, Cornerstone family. Thank you so much for joining us online today. Uh, we are studying the book of Revelation. And from chapter 6 through now, uh, chapter 12 we've studied, we're going to go into chapters 13 and 14, we start to see a summary uh, each time of the seven-year period of great tribulation on this earth. And as we start to see God's wrath being poured out, I want us to keep in mind the big idea is this. God extends his mercy with the final countdown before he judges this world. He's extending his mercy right now to you and I, that if we'll turn from our sins and turn to him, he will forgive us our sins and give us eternal life. And this is all done through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. So let's jump in to uh, chapter 13 today. Um, the first question uh, I want us to think about is who will be uh, the Lord of our lives? You know, who will, ch who will we choose to worship? We need to be careful on who we choose to worship. There's going to be three characters introduced today in chapters 13 and 14. The first character is the dragon, and we learned a little about him last week that the dragon is Satan. He, he is the devil, the, the one who accuses us, and he'll come up out of the abyss. And then, and then the second uh, person we're introduced today is the beast, and the beast uh, is the Antichrist. He will be the ruler of this world, and then we'll also be introduced to the little beast. Who's the little beast? He's a false prophet that will lead everyone to worship the Antichrist the beast of this world. So let's look at it. Uh, first truth today is be careful who you worship. Uh, verse 1, chapter 13. And the dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. He had ten horns and seven heads, with ten crowns on his horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. So we're getting a picture of who this is. Uh, the beast I saw resemble a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon, uh, referring to Satan, gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. Uh, so again, having an understanding of the Old Testament and Daniel chapters 7 through 12, we see that this is the old Roman Empire being revived. Uh, we're recorded here as 10, 10 nations having 10 horns, right? But 10 crowns? Well, out of this 10 nations, one person will be obviously the ruler of all ten. Yes, each, each nation will have a crown, each nation will have a ruler, but there'll be one. that will be clearly the Antichrist, the ruler of this world. He'll be the supreme ruler. Verse 3, one of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was astonished and followed the beast. So he'll be miraculously healed somehow, some kind of false healing, but the world will start to say, wow, you know, this guy is something special. Uh, verse four, men worshiped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast. And they also worshiped the beast and asked, who was like the beast? Who could make war against him? Uh, so he's gonna have all political power. He'll also have the military power. Um, Notice that it says that men will not just worship the beast, but they'll worship who? The dragon as well. They will start to see that this beast, this Antichrist, is empowered by Satan. And so people will clearly start to worship Satan at this time. Verse 5, the beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise his authority for 42 years months. And so we start to see a timeline. This is three and a half years, likely the last three and a half years of this great tribulation. Uh, Daniel says that this, this beast, this Antichrist, will make peace with Israel for seven years, but in the middle, three and a half, he'll break that covenant. And now we start to see his true colors coming out. He opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. 
So he'll start cursing and, uh, and blaspheming everything in heaven, God and angels and Jesus and, and those who have died and have gone to heaven, those who have been raptured up into heaven. He's going to curse everything in heaven. Uh, verse 7, he was given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. And he was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. Uh, so here we see that the Antichrist, his true colors are coming out, and now he is chasing after Israel, and this is likely the time where Israel is going into hiding now that we read in chapters 11 and 12. All the inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the book of life belonging to the lamb that was slain from the creation of the world, he who has an ear let him hear. So the rest of the world, those who have not put their trust in Jesus Christ are now going to start to worship uh, this beast. This, the first truth uh, is be careful who you worship. Uh, the second truth is be faithful until the end. For those who are still on this planet, <laughs> they're going to have to make a choice. Either the God of this world or the God of heaven. Verse 10, chapter 13, verse 10, if anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity, he will go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword, he will be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of the saints. There'll be many people that will choose to follow Christ. And because they do, they will not take the mark of the beast. They will not follow and worship after the beast. And so, this period of time is set. We read in chapter 11 where God says, no more delay, and judgment is coming. Be faithful to the end. Well, we see that the false prophet, he'll convince the world uh, to worship the beast. Look at verse 11. Uh, then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon, so two horns, not ten, so he's not going to have as much power. But his whole goal is to make people worship the Antichrist. He'll be a false prophet. Verse 13, he performed great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven and to earth in full view of man. And, and, and so we, we know that the devil can't create anything new. He only imitates and in chapter 11, we saw that there was two witnesses God will give us on this planet during this seven-year period of time, two witnesses that will call people to repentance. And we do know that many will turn their hearts to the Lord, but many will harden their hearts and reject God. Well, this false prophet, he imitates the fire that these two prophets are calling, you know, when people try to kill the two prophets, Fire comes out of their mouth and they die. Well, he now starts to imitate that. Calls fire down from heaven. Because of the signs he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast, he deceived the inhabitants of the earth. He ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. Now, setting up an image of a ruler is nothing new. We see that in throughout history, whether it's an, a graven image or maybe a picture. But watch what happens next. He was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast and so that it could speak and cause all who refuse to worship the image to be killed. So some kind of avatar, I don't know, but some kind of image that will actually look like it comes to life. And those who refuse, who reject to worship the beast, those who put their faith in Christ, they will be put to death. Now the true colors are really starting to come out of this Antichrist. Things are heating up. And then we see that he will control people, and he will use a cashless society to do this. Look at verse 16. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead 
so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. And I, I think it's interesting that the mark will be on the right hand or the forehead. If you know the Jewish custom, uh, Jewish uh, people used to wear a phylactery. It would be a piece of scripture rolled up in a leather uh, pouch, and then they would tie it to their right hand, or they would tie it to their forehead. And so he takes this imagery to a different level. It's all about him. It's all about his name, and everyone has to worship him, and you have to have his number, and you must accept his number. Uh, it says, this calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is man's number. His number is six. Six, six. And, and so over time, people have tried to think of, you know, ways of taking numbers to letters, and, and I, I've seen it all. I've seen so many different names, and people changing the spelling of a name, trying to say that this may be the Antichrist. Uh, this is what we know. The number seven is God's number. It means completion. It means power. And six is one less than seven, so it's incomplete. And man is incomplete. He, he is not as powerful as complete as God is. Uh, so we know that it is a man. Um, and I like to use Scripture to interpret Scripture. And, and so there's only one other place in Scripture that the number 666 is mentioned and that's in 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 14, which it says the weight of the gold that Solomon received yearly was 666 talents. And so I wonder if possibly this Antichrist, this, this beast of a man empowered by Satan, is someone like Solomon with charisma, with incredible wealth, that is a king, a ruler, and has incredible wisdom. And he drops these truth bombs. And maybe he'll say, you know, we all should love one another. And if you're a Christian, you would be saying, yeah, that's what the Bible says. Oh, well, you need to hear it the way he says it. Somehow people will start to worship this, this man, this, this anti-Christ so the first truth, be careful who you worship. The second truth, be faithful until the end. And then the third truth is God is present with those who praise him. Uh, this is chapter 14, and, and I love this. This is at the end of this great tribulation, we see God's anointed 144,000 people. Watch this. Then I looked, and there before me, was the Lamb, Jesus Christ, the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 who had his name and his Father's name written on their foreheads. Uh, so Mount Zion, uh, if, if you understand, Mount Zion is the hills surrounding Jerusalem. And, and so here you have the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, and he has... Uh, this 144,000 Jewish believers that have been witnesses of God's grace and mercy and power through the seven-year period of time, and they're identified, they're identified by the name of God the Father, God the Son. They're not identified as Baptists. They're, they're not identified as a Presbyterian or whatever church you go to. They identify because they belong to Jesus Christ. They belong to God the Father. It says, and I heard a sound from heaven like the roar of rushing waters and like a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. So this incredible music and worship. They sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. Now this is going back to chapter 4, right, where this great worship experience in heaven. So we, we see this picture, this worship before God, and no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. This is a song that you don't learn in heaven because this is a song that had to come out of experience. 
experience of being on this earth through trial and tribulation, trusting in God, trusting in their Savior. This 144,000 are faithful followers of Jesus. Look at verse 4. These are those who do not defile themselves with women, for they kept themselves pure. They've resisted the Antichrist. (laughs) They resisted illicit sex. Israel in the past has struggled by cheating on their wives and then worshiping the gods of the women that they cheated with from other nations, but no longer will that be. They will be faithful followers of Jesus Christ. They will follow the Lamb. It says they will follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They they were purchased from among men and offered as first fruits to God in the Lamb. And notice that our salvation is always through Jesus Christ. They were purchased just like you and I. We're redeemed by what Jesus did for us. And it, and it says that they are first fruits. First fruits, that means that there's more fruit to come. Uh, this, is, this is first fruits that there are more. And we see, you know, if we go back into Revelation 7, just a reminder that not only was there 144,000 sealed, but there is a great multitude far beyond ability to count of men, women, from every tribe, every nation that come to have faith in God, that are saved during this time. During this time, many of them will have to give their lives for their faith in Christ. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. It's interesting because we're called to be the evangelist. We're called to share the story of grace and mercy. But God is going to do one more supernatural act. He's going to have an angel crying out for people to turn to him, to worship him, to give him glory because we're down to the final hour. Again, we're seeing a summarization of the seven-year period. His judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens and the earth, the sea and the springs of water. Turn, turn now to God. See, the truth is, if we reject Jesus, there is a certain inescapable judgment. Judgment is coming. But God is extending his mercy right now. And even in this time where people are choosing to worship the beast, empowered by Satan, this Antichrist, God still extends his mercy. A third angel followed him and said in a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on the forehead or on the hand, he too will drink of the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. He will be tormented, tor- tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. This is eternal judgment. The reality is that there is hell, fire, and damnation for those who reject God's grace. But understand this, that God loves us and he wants us to be in a relationship with him. And this is why he has delayed his return. This is why he has delayed his judgment on this planet. But time is running out and we're reading the end of the story. Verse 11 says that the smoke of their torment rises from ever and ever. There is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and whose image or or follow anyone who receives the mark of the name. So if we choose the God of this world, if if we choose to worship this antichrist, this beast that is empowered by Satan and reject God, there's no more grace, there's no more mercy. The good news is that everyone will hear the gospel. Because God loves everyone. 
And he's given you and I the responsibility to share the good news. And even in this last hour, this last moment, God will send an angel to proclaim throughout the whole world so everyone will hear one more time. Everyone will hear the good news. Verse 12 says, This calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. Understand for those who say yes to Jesus during this time, it means that they will have to die for their faith. And there's an encouragement here. Stay faithful. (laughs) This life is so short. Stay faithful. Your eternal reward is in heaven. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Because many, many will come to faith, but they'll have to give their lives for Jesus. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. Verse 14, I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man, with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Uh, Referring, you know, Jesus He died for us. He rose again. There's going to be a time that many of these men and women will have to give their lives and say no to the mark of the beast and accept their fate. But their reward in heaven is sure. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was seated on the cloud, take your sickle and reap because the time to reap has come for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. And I believe that's a picture in Revelation 7 of this multitude from all nations, all people. Well, that's the good news. We talked about last week the bittersweet. Judgment is the bitter part. It's coming. The sweet is that there's still mercy. But judgment will be final for those who reject the God of heaven, reject Jesus Christ as their Savior, and turn their hearts to the God of this world. Judgment, judgment will be final. Verse 17, another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. Still another angel who had charge of the fire came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle. Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the earth's vine because its grapes are ripe. Now, coming from the altar, the fire of the altar reminds us of Revelation 4 where those many, many people are underneath the altar there that have been martyred for their faith in Jesus Christ. And they're calling out, God, how long? How long? until you finally judge this world and all the evil? Well, now we see this is that moment. God's wrath has come. The angel swung his sickle on the earth, gathered its grapes, and threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled in the wine press outside the city, and the blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as the horse's bridles for a distance of 1,600 stadia. This is a picture of the great battle of Armageddon in Revelation 19, where Satan's armies will march against Israel. But they'll all be destroyed by just the word of Jesus Christ. The battle will be over. Judgment will be final. God takes no pleasure in the death of wicked people. He wants everyone to turn to him. In 2 Peter 3.9, Peter summarizes this seven-year period of great tribulation really in just two sentences. He says, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. See, people mock God right now. 
They mock the God of heaven. And they say, well, I don't see him coming. I don't see anybody going up to heaven. And Peter reminds us, he's not being slow. We, we see, we've been reading that God has been holding back his wrath. But there'll come a time when he says, no more delay. But right now, he's being patient with us. He says, no, he's being patient for your sake, for my sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but everyone to come to repentance. Everyone. That's God's heart. That's God's desire. But the choice is yours. Who will you worship? Will you worship the God of pleasure? Will you worship the God of this world? Or will you worship the God of heaven? The God that loves you. The God that is holy and righteous, and he will judge sin. Now you can accept Jesus Christ as your Savior who took your punishment upon the cross. He took the wrath of God for you and I. Or you can reject Jesus and face the full judgment of God. Who will you worship? Would you pray with me? Their heads bowed and their eyes closed. The question is, who will we worship? Right now, God, you've given us time. Right now, we have this moment. We don't know what tomorrow may bring. Lord, I pray that right now, each of us would humble our hearts before you, that we would confess our sins, that we'd stop playing games, that we'd stop having one foot in this this world, one foot in heaven that doesn't work. We can't worship you and then still worship the God of this world. We must make a choice. Either the God of heaven, either you, God, or the God of this world. Thank you that you have held back your wrath. Lord, we thank you that you have given us more time. But now is the day of salvation. And so right now as we're praying, If you have not yet placed your faith, your trust in Jesus Christ, would you do that right now? No more delays. Make up your mind. Choose today to make him the Lord of your life. If that's your desire, you can pray along with me to say, Dear Jesus, I've waited way too long. I confess that I am a sinner and I understand my sin must be judged. But Lord, I also understand that you love me so much that you've extended your mercy to me. That Jesus, you went to the cross while I'm a sinner, Lord. You went to the cross and died in my place, paid for my sins, my shame, and my guilt, died for me, and rose again. So Lord, today, I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to come into my life, to forgive me of my sins. I surrender my will to you, Lord Jesus, to follow you, to honor you. Lord, help me to be faithful. Help me to follow you for the rest of my life, Lord, the best I know how, Lord. I seek you today for the rest of my life. I surrender to you, Jesus. You are the Lord of my life. It's in the powerful name of Jesus, I pray, amen. If you made a decision today, please let me know. You can text the word BELIEVE to 858-682-2424. And I'd love to talk with you and encourage you. If you don't already have a study Bible, it would be our honor to give you one of those. Also, if you'd like to connect with our church, there's a lot, a lot going on through the rest of November and into December, so we'd love to keep you connected. Just text the word CONNECT to 858-682-2424. For the next couple of weeks, we are collecting uh, some gifts to help out the children in our community, so if you'd like to be part of that, please let us know. Until next week, God bless, and let's now continue in our worship 
with Joy and Kim. And I heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. And I heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. You tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. And I've seen many searching for answers far and wide. We're all searching for answers Only you provide Because you know What we need Before we say a word You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you love us. You want to be with us. You want to know us, God. And you know our hearts. 
Father, thank you that you love and take care of us. You watch and protect us. Continue to be with our Cornerstone family at home. Continue to guide them, encourage them, and uplift them, God. So, Father, we thank you for this time. Continue to bring us back here next week. God, we praise you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, all God's people say. Cornerstone family, hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Continue to join us online every single Sunday at 915 and also live at 11 a.m. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for joining us today and thank you for your generous uh, giving. It's really helping more people find and follow Jesus. Uh, this coming week, this coming weekend, we're going to be decorating our church facilities and we'll also be installing our toddler's playground. So we hope to see you on Saturday. God bless. God bless you.